Hello, my name is Sheila Arrett and I'm an infant and early childhood mental health consultant and Children's Resource Center. Today we will be talking about teaching your kids personal safety boundaries and strategies they can use to protect these. And for you as a parent, ways um, to respond should a child ever come to you and tell you that they've been inappropriately touched. Just a disclaimer before we begin, we will be talking about statistics and situations of childhood sexual abuse. It's not an easy topic to talk about, but it is one that needs to be shared. We want to teach our children the skills um, so that they can protect themselves should they ever find themselves in a situation that could become abusive. We don't want them to have to endure the pain that so many have had to go through. To start with, it's important as parents that we understand um, the, the situation and that because it's so hard to talk about and, and we don't want to think about it. We want to think of kids as innocent and they can grow and develop and, and not have to worry about this and be violated in this way. But the truth of the matter is it does exist and the numbers are pretty staggering. In the United States, one in 10 children will be sexually abused before the age of 18. That is a high amount. 10% of children will go through this. Um, Girls are more likely than boys to be sexually abused, but boys are not exempt. About one in four girls and one in seven boys, um, it's estimated, experience sexual abuse. And there's a myth out there that it's stranger danger. It's the person that the child doesn't know that they need to be aware of. But the truth of the matter is 90% of the circumstances of sexual abuse were perpetrated by someone the child knew whether it be a family member, a coach, a clergyman, a teacher, it's someone already in their circle of trust in some degree. Um, the, the person knows the child. So it's all the more important that they have some skills and that they can stand up for themselves and know what is and is not okay. We might um, consider too that it just as adults who portray sexual abuse. But in 40% of the cases, it was an older child or teen who abused another child. And these are the statistics that we know about. The majority of child sexual abuse goes unreported. And that's for a number of reasons. Children might worry about what will happen if they tell or if um, anyone will believe them. They might fear that they're gonna get in trouble. Um, and because of these things, we don't know the full extent of those who have experienced sexual abuse. And we might worry that by talking about this, it could lead to some false reports that kids will say something happened and didn't. But the truth of the matter is false reports are rare. If a child is coming to you and saying that something, they have been inappropriately touched or someone took inappropriate pictures, then we need to, um, believe them and then get help. This information is hard to hear. Um, so what do we do about it? Well, first we can teach safe body safety skills along with general safety skills. We teach skills of fire safety, crossing the road, of what to do if there's a tornado. We can talk about body safety right along with those things. It's another way to protect ourselves. We can teach children assertive communication skills and that they have a right to say yes or no to touches to their body. We might worry with this if we tell them they can say no to hugs and kisses, that they might come across rude to family members um, who have no ill intention, that there's nothing to worry about with those family members. In a way that we can help mitigate this is that we can um, teach children to offer different options for greetings of help, hello and goodbye greetings. So let's say a child is resistant to hugs. Could they give a high five or a fist bump? Um, could they do a little pinky shake? Um, there's different options. If we allow the child to have a say, um, we could help prevent them feeling like there's a touch that's being forced upon them. And then additionally, beyond this, we can also teach them the proper names of their body parts. 
And the reason for this is twofold. One, um, if a um, if something is occurring and they are being touched inappropriately, we want them to be able to get help as soon as possible. Let's say you use a, a code name or a, um, a nickname for private body parts at home, and they go and they tell an adult that doesn't know that code name or um, that nickname, and they say, so and so touched my flower, which is one nickname that might be used. The adult might not know what they're talking about. They might think they're talking about a flower in the yard and they might not get that the child's actually seeking help. So it's important to tell the child the proper names of that um, so that if anything is occurring, they can clearly communicate and the adults can clearly know what they're talking about. Secondly, um, research shows that they've talked to individuals who have abused children and um, they have found that they look for certain kinds of kids to abuse. They look for the kids who cannot stand up for themselves, who, um, who tend to be more meek and um, who are less knowledgeable about those kind of things. So if we instill in the, our children the ability to say no and that they know enough about the, and they have body awareness that they know that it's not okay for someone to do that, um, then we are building in protective factors for them against sexual abuse. We can teach kids about uh, private body parts too um, by teaching them about the bathing suit role. Basically, the areas that are covered by your bathing suit are private. And for younger kids to start out with, we can start teaching them that no one should touch their private body parts except to keep them healthy. And they should not be touching other people's private parts either. Um, the same with pictures and whatnot as well. Um, by telling them this rule, we also teach them, okay, what is healthy then? Um, well, if they go to the doctor, doctor's going to conduct his checkup and make sure everything is okay. Um, they might have to touch some private body parts um, when, during their examination. That would be a time to keep them healthy. It's not a secret. Guardian, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, someone is accompanying the child to the doctor and they know about it and they're there. So it's not a secret, it's to keep them healthy. There's a purpose to that. Um, for young toddlers and preschoolers, the same would be true for diaper changes, uh, bathing, uh, changing clothes, toileting. They're gonna need help. They can't do it on their own. Well, we can talk to kids about, well, I'm doing this to help keep you healthy you're going to get bigger. You're going to start doing these things on your own. And so um, you won't need an adult to help you or anyone to help you in the future. We can additionally teach kids that they need to ask for permission before they go somewhere, um, before they take a ride. If, if you've got some older kids and they make their plans, they need to let you know when their plans change. And even things along the lines of accepting gifts. The reason behind this is the situations in which sexual abuse usually occurs. Usually occurs in one-on-one -on -one situations in a location known to that child, whether it be their home or the abuser's home, a, a setting familiar to that child. Um, and abusers often uh, start trying to warm that child up before abuse actually happens. It's called grooming the child. They will give the child gifts. Um, and they will seek out time for just that child. And you see it more so with just seeking one attention with one particular child. And the gifts would be out of the ordinary too, not like Christmas gifts or birthday gifts. It would be more out, um, out of the blue kind of gifts. So the reason that we want kids to tell us about these things is, well, if you start to see a pattern and start to see, oh, they keep wanting to spend time with, this one child and not siblings and there's a lot of gifts and extra affection those would be red flags and that would as a parent um, want to intervene and set some boundaries of things that are appropriate um, also we want to teach kids the difference between safe surprises and unsafe secrets 
And in general, we want to teach kids that we just don't keep secrets. Reason being is, again, situations where sexual abuse occur, abusers often tell children not to tell, so they don't get in trouble, right? And they might um, say, it's our secret. This is our special game. Um, and something along those lines. So if we tell children the difference between safe surprises and explain that a surprise is something like a birthday gift or a surprise party, um, you know, we, we might know about a sibling's gift at, for Christmas, but we don't want to tell them because they, we want them to be surprised. And when they're surprised, the emotions they usually feel are excited. They feel special and loved. Our secrets tend to be those things that weigh on us, um, might make us feel heavy, like something weighing down on us or, or burdened by it, um, and feel icky inside. So differentiating between what, what is okay to keep, but we don't keep those things um, that could be harmful. Um, and we also want to ensure kids that they can come to you um, if they have a problem, keeping that open communication so that if anything um, should come and letting kids know they can trust their, their gut. That, you know, if something starts to happen, you know, often get an icky feeling um, or uncomfortable feeling, they can trust that and they can come talk to you and they haven't done anything wrong in that. We can practice what if scenarios. So we might talk to kids about what would you do if a stranger offered you candy or said, come help me find a dog? Well, let's do scenarios too about safe touches. What would you do if someone said, let's play a special touching game and want to touch private body parts or wanted to take pictures of private body parts or you touch their private parts? What would you do in those situations? What would you say? Um, and ever, you would want your children to be able to say, I would say no. And if they didn't listen, I would get away if I could. And I would go tell you or another adult. Um, maybe we want kids to keep telling until an adult listens. Oh, lastly, we want to talk often about this. Um, it's a hard topic to talk about and makes us feel uncomfortable to talk to kids because we don't want to think about it happening. But the more often we talk about it, the more where they are, the easier it gets to talk about. Um, and it becomes like we talk about other safety skills as well. There are many children's stories too that can help um, ease these conversations. Um, some of these just talk about basic assertiveness, like my body belongs to me. That's a good one to just teach kids that their body um, belongs to them. And they can decide what touches they do and do not like and what to do if somebody's not listening to them. Some secrets should not be kept. That goes into more of um, a little boy. His uh, babysitter has touched him inappropriately. It started out that we're just a caring relationship and they would play and um, but then it leads into him being inappropriately touched and he, he gets all worried inside about what to do. Finally, he decides to tell his mom and his mom responds and tells him he's so brave and gets help and um, so that the abuser is no longer in his life. There are also some YouTube videos that are great to introduce this topic for kids. Um, My Body Belongs to Me is one of the books from the previous slide but it has been converted into an animated short film for children um, about four minutes long. And it, it's, it's a great way to start talking to kids about it. You can watch that, that together and discuss it. Uh, additionally, Fight Child Abuse is an agency that has produced Protect Yourself Rules videos. Um, they have six, six different uh, rules that they go over and including what to do on body safety if anyone would viol violate your boundaries with body safety. After that, um, we also want to talk about internet safety as well. Unfortunately, the internet has provided opportunities um, for abusers to have access to children they previously wouldn't have had access to. 
So in general, we want to teach kids not to disclose personal information, anything like their address, their school, their name, um, identifying information should they be on uh, online gaming or another site. If their camera is on, um, be aware of what's in your background, because even if they don't tell um, their name or any of that personal information, if they have something in the back, because you can see my background right here, um, if they would have a school shirt or a poster or a ward, well, if the school's name's on there, you can simply Google it and find out where somebody is. Um, also, if, you know, if your child's on the internet, it's possible that they could come across something that would be inappropriate for them, um, a picture or a site. Um, reassure them that they can come talk to you, that it's not their fault, that they're not going to get in trouble. And that way that you as a parent can access that site and get it off the computer. Um, and then, of course, monitoring where your children are going and what things that they're viewing so that it's appropriate and what you feel as a parent is appropriate for their age level. Um, there are many resources for parents for internet safety out there and I encourage you to look into some of those blockers as well. So, so next, let's talk about what to do if a child actually comes to you and says that they have been inappropriately touched. That can be such a hard thing to hear um, and be devastating to hear. But as much as possible, we want to remain calm. Our children feed off of our emotions and our body language. Um, and we want to be present for them in this moment and know that they are getting support. Um, so it's important to first regulate yourself. And if you can't in the moment, say, give me a moment, let's come back and we'll talk about this so that you can calm yourself. Um, next, you want to ask open-ended questions just to gather basic information. And an open, open question in a situation like this would be something along the lines of, could you tell me more? What happened then? Um, what did they tell you? Um, we wouldn't want to ask leading questions such as, did someone so and touch X, Y, and Z? And, um, that gives too much information and could um, change what the child remembers or change the story a bit. So we want to just leave open-ended questions. We also want to reassure the child that it's not their fault. A child may feel that they did something to deserve this, that their actions somehow brought this on, but nothing a child has done could deserve to be violated in this way. So we want to reassure children that they, they didn't do anything. This is the other person's actions and their responsibility to, you know. Um, and then also we want to um, let the child know that we believe them. That can be a big fear and a big reason why children don't tell. Uh, but reassure that you believe them and as much as possible that you will get help. In Ohio, you, can, um, you want to call local authorities and you want to uh, have them come and uh, be able to uh, investigate. And it's not our job to decide if a situation happened or didn't and what all the details are. We want the general so we can tell them what happened, who was involved and whatnot. But, um, but they can get into the specifics during their investigation. And in Ohio, there's an 855 number that you can call that'll direct you to the appropriate resources in your county. And we need to remember that um, by reporting, we may be saving another child as well. We don't know um, who all that person has affected and how many people are being abused. We might find about one case, but there could be others or, the, or in the future there could be more. So by reporting, we might save other children as well. And while as hard as it is uh, to think about, and those numbers are pretty staggering, prevention is possible. It's why we teach these skills and why we start early with these skills, because we want children 
to be able to have a voice and be able to know that it's not okay for someone to touch them inappropriately and that they can say no, they can get help and uh, it, does, it doesn't have to happen or continue it, if it has happened. There are a number of internet resources for parents and caregivers. Um, here are some of the most frequent ones I used. I hope that you have found this helpful. If you would like more information, feel free to reach out to us at Children's Resource Center. And thanks for watching.